Hello everybody, I would like to show you some of my workflows to uh, model quick and most of all precise. For that I start with a grid and the first thing is if I have a grid with two meters I better make sure that the x and y subdivisions are well contained within the two meters otherwise I will get problems sooner than later. So next I rotate this by 90 degrees and go to object uh, apply all transforms and tap to edit mode. Now I have a look at this in front view, select this polygon, skip 3, select this one, shift, control plus, 4, 5, 6, 7, that's what we need. Then I control invert this selection and delete the faces. Now I select everything and extrude and control extrude it on the Y and with control I snap to the next grid and this is uh, in this case when we are so far away or so far out it's one meter. Next I need a cut through all my steps by the way this is uh, this is the stair half finished already. Okay, but not quite. So I need a cut through here and unfortunately the knife tool cannot snap to the grid. I don't know why, but it cannot. So what it can do is it can snap to the middle of an edge. So I select the knife tool with K for knife. Then I press C to activate cut through, press shift and now I can cut through here and no matter where I put it will cut through the middle. Then we can click in here, press enter to confirm this cut and go to top view and we have a cut through it exactly in the middle edge, select, select this edge and grab it in Y and control, pull it down to here. Now I need an orientation in exactly the middle of the square and to do this I select these polygons, this one, and this one and then go to uh, face poke and you saw it doesn't have a hotkey and I use this a lot and that's why I have it that's wrong I have it in my quick favorites poke faces okay now I want to use pipes uh, to make my reeling and for that I go to vertex mode, select this vertex here, shift S and set the cursor to select it, then shift A to add a pipe joint and we use the Y joint mostly and once the elbow. We could use the T but it's easier to use this one. So I select this one and that's another thing I prefer to do. I think what do you do with a pipe which is one meter radius and three meters in a leg? 
I prefer to have real life dimensions. Namely, if I model a stair, for example, I can go to my stairs in my house and measure it and I know uh, what size they are. But I have prepared, <coughs> pardon me, smaller ones, unfortunately they don't uh, snap to our 3D cursor and I also use shift A and use the elbow which is the same problem and I have prepared a smaller one. Now we can select or have selected all these. We can get rid of them by deleting the faces. Now I add a Y joint again and now it snaps exactly to the 3D cursor and because I know it I will is it this one yes I must put this one to 135 degrees and uh, if you have other dimensions than me I have exactly a 45 degree angle in my steps if you have another angle then you must measure it and we can do so with uh, the measure tool for example I activate it and then I control click here and here yes and then I can drag this one up to this vertex and you see this is 135 degrees and I can measure also this angle here so I click here no, no, no good, no good. I delete this one again, then control click here and you see we have exactly the 20 centimeters. Release this and then I can drag this one to here and you see we have our 45 degree angle and uh, it, as I said if you have different sizes of your steps then you must measure it and this is how you do it. The tool itself is not very intuitive I must say but once you get the hang of it it's very good and it's very precise. The measurements stay and I can go back to my main selection cursor then can select this vertex here, shift A, add another Y joint. Oh no, sorry, that's that's not good. Undo. Uh, I must first place the cursor here. So select this, shift S and cursor to select it, shift A and another Y joint. This leg here is OK and this one must be 90 degrees. OK, now let's have a look how this looks. That's all good. Next, I put the cursor, so Shift S, to the center of the world select everything and duplicate it, shift D and grab it along X with the control key, control and bring it to here. Now we also need to adjust it in the height, so here Grab in Y to here. 
OK. Now everything is where it should be and we can rotate this. So top view again, rotate and control rotate it around the pivot point. We don't need to be in transparent mode. And now I need another one in here. So Shift S, cursor to select it, Shift A, and we need to rotate it in Z by 90 degrees. That's good. And the, this one must be 45. Good. Now we can add the knee here. So Shift S, cursor to select it, Shift A, elbow and turn it around by 180. Okay. Now uh, I fill in this area here. So I select, I go to face mode, select these two faces and delete them. Then I put this one back to bounding box and snap to vertex. Then I can select these two faces here and extrude and click on this vertex and extrude again and click on here. Now we can select everything and merge by distance, so mesh, merge by distance. That's another one I use very often. That's why I have it in my quick favorites. So I didn't check how many vertices we have uh, merged. So A again and try a little bit to No, that must have been okay. Six. We have removed six. That sounds good. Good. Okay. Next, I go to these here. Select. Shift select this one, extrude and extrude to here. What happened with my snap? Oh, anyway, not so important. Okay, now I select this one here and hide it. Shift S, cursor to select it, Shift A, another pipe and Turn it 180, no, 90 degrees only. And bring this one down to 90. And now we can grab it in Y and 
Shift D, grab it again, Shift D, and that's okay. Next, I unhide Shift uh, Alt H. Okay, now we have pretty much everything we need and I would like to have the rails as a separate object and that's I select go to transparency mode first select this then select similar objects with the amount of faces around here. Now we can select the entire objects with uh, select linked all which I have put on another short key if you see only control, then it means control and a special character, which is not on every keyboard. Now I can grab this in Z and bring it up a little. Uh, let's see. I bring it up. We need 40. We need 80 centimeters to about here. Okay, now P key and I select this, quickly tap to object mode, select it, go back to edit mode and now the stair is not selectable anymore and I can continue with my rails. So I go to edge mode, select this right click and bridge and now we can bring the bottom of our rails to where they should be so I select this again and select similar amount of faces. Now we have too many, so control, select these and these two. And now bring this one down, grab it, set to here. Okay. Next, we need to bevel these edges. We're still in transparency mode. Select, shift, select. Okay, now we can control B, bevel that with the shift key to make it a bit slower. And I make this 0 0.005 with two segments and a shape of one. Okay. Okay, now we can finish this area here. So I uh, select it, no, just these two, then press the dot key on the numeric keyboard, top view. Now we have it in view. We don't need 
transparency mode, I can use the knife tool again, K, C to cut through, A for angle constraint, 45 degrees, and cut through here, click and enter to confirm. Now select these and these ones, then X vertices. Now this one and merge by distance. Oh, eight have moved, eight have. That's good. We don't have more than eight. We can control B this now. And Beverly two about here. And here I use 0.5 so to make it not as hard as the other ones. We can go to object mode quickly and have a look how this looks when it's smooth. Right click, shade smooth, looks good. Add a sub D, level 1, looks still good. That's nice. Okay, now that's it. We are done. Stairs and rails are finished. I hope you liked it as much as you obviously liked my previous video. I never ever had this in more than 10 years of YouTube, but the last video had more than a thousand views in 24 hours. I think that must have been something wrong in the YouTube algorithm. Maybe something else has happened. If someone of you knows what it was, then please let me know in the comments. I'm very, very curious. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching this and staying till the end. Take care and have fun modeling with Blender. See you some other time. Bye-bye.